Hi, it's Paul from HowToNetwork.com. Just another idea I had of, uh, as you can see from the title, I came up with 11 things that every network engineer should be able to do. And this is based on my experience of working for several companies as an employee, a contractor, consultant, etc. And it's normally when something happens or there's an incident or a question and somebody turns to a network engineer and they don't know the answer. And this is where you start thinking, well, you kind of should have known this stuff because it's your job as a network engineer. So we're going to share them with you. If you only know a few of them, don't worry, don't knock yourself and make a list and, and start thinking about ways you can learn these skills and improve upon them because it makes you better at your job. You're less likely to get in trouble and you're probably going to earn more money and it'll give you more opportunities. So this is why IT is probably one of the best careers out there. So uh, without further ado, we'll get started. So this is what we'd call our bread and butter stuff. This is why I say every network engineer should be able to do it. And I've worked in an effort of quite a few places where the engineer will only learn one thing that they think it's their job to do. For example, manage server backups and they don't learn anything else. And it's a shame. So uh, these kind of skills normally go without saying you normally don't get asked about them in interviews because they presume you already know because you're a network person. Um, a lot of courses and books miss out this stuff as well. This is my real world advice. So back when I started, you really just chose one thing that you want to do, do for an IT company. You would have a cable engineer, someone that just looked after servers, but they wouldn't touch a cable. Uh, somebody that looked after the backups and uh, re, re, uh, replacing software from backups if there was a loss of data. Someone who looked after the email server and nothing else. And you imagine like the email engineer, for example, who doesn't understand IP addressing or some basic security or basic networking, they're going to have a problem doing their job if something goes wrong. Now, um, 2019, you need to be able to do all of these. I'm not saying be an expert, but just be able to do them. So a bit of security, design, uh, a little bit of pro managing projects, troubleshoot uh, issues, create procedures and processes. Normally there's a legal requirement for you to do this. So it's not just because it makes good business sense, but because you actually have to have documentation and a chain of custody and prove that data has been kept securely, etc. So I'll start, this is in no particular order, but if I was going to have a number one, it would be this. Explain TCP IP top to bottom. You need to be really familiar with TCP IP. A packet frames and bits, how they're made, and what the difference is, obviously the RSI model as well for context. All the services um, um, contained in TCP IP, DNS, SSH, ping, Talnet. How do you use them? What they're used for? Which of these will you use for which problems? When you get a phone call and say that something's broken, what, what would be your go-to tool or command for that problem? Obviously, IP addressing, subnetting, route summarization. I guarantee half the people I've worked with on networks don't actually understand this. And then they can't troubleshoot problems. <laughs> uh, a good way to get the, a grasp of all of this is the CompTIA Network Plus exam. That's probably the best exam to go for to learn all of this. Next, using packet capture uh, programs. This is also known as sniffing. Uh, Ethereal was the original version, and now uh, Wireshark's um, a, a rebrand of that software. So you'll often be asked, especially, especially if there's a network problem, by your boss or by a customer or by a vendor of the equipment to uh, capture some packets to prove that there's an issue. So you'd often use Wireshark, but there are others available. You troubleshoot a network issue with this. You confirm a theory. If you think there's a particular problem on the network, you can use it to uh, prove your theory or disprove it. Uh, you can use it to log tickets. So a vendor, vendors often will say it's nothing to do with them or it's not their problem. Well, if you can present them the evidence from a packet capture, then they have to accept that um, it's their problem to fix. You can baseline your network. And this is for capacity planning, if you need to put a case forward for upgrading all or part of the network. And uh, the go-to certification at the moment is the Wireshark Certified Network An An Analyst, WCNA. So great certification to look for. Designing networks. I'm not talking about designing an entire data center from scratch 
or an ISP. I'm just talking about some basic design principles. And um, there's not many models out there. I'll tell you. Well, you can see it on the far on the bottom right. Actually, Cisco have got the probably uh, widely widest used and um, widely known uh, design model for you to follow, even if you're not using Cisco equipment. So you can make informed decisions for purchases. You can actually plan network addressing and have your network divided into the correct segments for IP addressing, efficient usage, and um, route summarization as well. It's really important. Design for your traffic flows. Where are your switches going? Which switch is going to be uh, your STP uh, master? Is you, are you going to have a, a, a route and uh, which is going to be the backup? You obviously uh, don't want to leave that to chance. It's a really bad idea. And the same for layer three. Are you going to have a, a security on your network? Well, obviously you will, but which, um, which model will you use and how are you going to apply it? Are you going to have a DMZ? So best certifications to look for, the only one I know of is the CCDA, the Cisco Certified Design Associate. Troubleshooting, really important. Uh, if an interface is down, if there's packet loss or performance or intermittent issues, they're the hardest. Routing black holes, where's your traffic going and why? Is it something you're doing? Is it a firewall? Is there a hardware issue, software, a bug, something like that? And modules that you insert into servers or routers or switches failing. Look at the Cisco CCNA, which has got a large troubleshooting section in there for all of the above and more, and the Network Plus as well. Securing your network. As a network person, you should have a good understanding of uh, security uh, fundamentals. Authentication, what it is, how it works. Your password policy may be down to you. Will you need to create VPNs? Uh, for site-to-site uh, -site or remote users to connect to your network? Will you be using network address translation? End user security as well, viruses, worms, what are going to be your policies, training, documentation, and again, this is compliance. Firewalls as well, what are you going to permit, deny from the inside and from the outside? Security of your wireless network. Incident handling is your compliance and documentation. I've already mentioned this before. Hardening your network from um, basic attacks. Look at the CompTIA Security Plus, and then I recommend after that the Cisco CCNA Security. A uh, really good exam to have, and it covers all of this and a lot more besides. Cloud and virtualization is number six. You need to understand what it is, the uh, different type of models available, software as a service, infrastructure, a platform as a service and what are they what are, what could they do for your business and do you need to uh, use them pros and cons because there's going to be both what could your company migrate would you migrate your email for example uh, your web server is for your um, business or um, would you just back up to the cloud etc you need to um, know what to do any impacts and risks Look at uh, the CompTIA Cloud Essentials, the Amazon uh, Cloud Exams for S3, Google, I've got cl uh, Cloud Exams, and Microsoft. You need to be able to manage a project. You're probably just not going to be the techie person anymore. You're going to need to do a few things, and it's going to be part of your job description. And it doesn't have to be a big project, but um, managing the upgrades of the hardware and software on the network, who's in charge, how it's going to um, happen, User training, uh, installation of multiple vendors equipment. Again, you're going to have to manage maybe a budget, dealing with all of these vendors, installation dates, uh, what's going to be required. Look in the first instance at the CompTIA Project Plus, and then there's um, Prince exams if you want to actually choose that as your career. Uh, number eight, processes and procedures. There never used to be any, and now it's a cornerstone. There's actually an entire uh, career in IT, being in charge of uh, your processes and procedures and all your documentation. So you need these for what's going to happen if there's an outage, what's going to happen if there's an, a network upgrade required, who's in charge, uh, how are you going to document it, what needs to happen before, during and after, rollbacks if there is an issue, uh, what happens when there's an unplanned outage, Who who's in charge, who, who takes control, who communicates to your end users or senior managers, your customers. You must have procedures for all of this. Who reports incidents? Um, you need to normally have a designated person 
who will uh, receive all of the initial complaints and then they'll interface with the uh, teams who can actually deal with it. Escalation and then there's the um, inevitable uh, meeting afterwards and they talk about uh, what caused it, how can we prevent it and do we need to change procedures or have more training. I recommend looking at the ITIL foundation, that's a great place to start and I've worked in places that use the ITIL model and it's worked really well for us. Number nine, IPv6, everyone's avoiding it, I've been talking about it for years, you must know it because um, around 40% of network traffic now is uh, using IPv6 and we're going to be phasing out IPv4. So you must know it in good detail. Uh, how the addressing works, how uh, the uh, what the packet looks like. There's plug and play features, how we can use the uh, addressing and neighbor discovery to um, make our network run more efficiently and make our job easier as a network administrator or whatever we're doing. We're using uh, dual IPv4 with IPv6, the dual stack, uh, routing protocols that work on IPv6, the best place to look is uh, the IPv6 Certified Associate, uh, that's on howtonetwork.com. Basic server operating systems, don't need to be an expert unless you want to be the server engineer for uh, Windows, for example. Uh, understand a bit about uh, Linux and all the various flavors available, Windows Server, Active Directory and Accounts, Groups and Folders Policy, no, no matter which software you're using, you'll need to understand that. Best place I recommend you start is the Microsoft MTA server because you can learn everything you need to know for that exam in just uh, five to ten hours. So maybe less than a week studying and the exam's really easy to um, pass. And now we're moving to uh, software defined networking where we're using GUIs and APIs to manage our network and, and make changes on our network. So we're moving further away from the command line interface that we've all, um, all been using. So um, I've mentioned APIs, uh, this is the future, it's actually in use now and the next version of the CCNA which is due very soon is going to be um, featuring software defined networking, so some basic uh, coding, you don't, don't need to need be an expert, you just need to know a little bit about it. So learn a little bit about Python, learn a bit about Java, there's loads of tutorials out there. Uh, you personally need to aim for roughly an hour a day if you can. And if um, you can do that while you're at work, even better. Read uh, read books, ebooks, or um, hardback books. Watch some videos on YouTube or various learning websites. Just keep up to date with what's happening in the industry on uh, Facebook groups and read whatever journals apply to your industry. And you need to aim for a certification around every three months. May take a bit longer depending on what it is, but around every three months. So strangely enough, every course I've mentioned and a knowledge area we have on howtonetwork.com. This is why I actually have the courses because they're, uh, they're good for your career. So please swing over and have a look if you uh, get a chance. If you're watching this video, you can get um, a dollar's access. After you've looked at the website, go to this URL, howtonetwork.com forward slash YouTube, HTTPS, make sure you put that. Uh, have a look through all the courses and then choose whichever one you want to start with. You can use, um, you can go through all of them one at a time. Loads of practice exams, live Cisco racks 24-7. Loads of experts on the forum to help you and we'll give you some really good career training. So um, thanks for listening to me again. If uh, you do like this video, please subscribe and um, make a comment. It really helps and I'll see you in the next video.